Hi everybody, this is Eva. I wanted to share a class that I taught earlier today, live, um, about resilience and strength, both uh, in our lives and on the mat. Uh, I wanted to have this recorded so that you could come back to this and practice it on your own, or even if you weren't able to attend the class today. So um, I'm gonna make this a little bit shorter, so not quite as long as the full length class. Uh, we'll start in a seated position. I like to sit up on a blanket, so I usually start that way. You can choose to have a blanket or even sit up on a chair if that feels more comfortable, legs crossed or not, and then just deciding what feels comfortable for you. And then just settling in, let your shoulders relax, noticing how your spine feels today. And if you're not quite ready to be still, allow yourself to maybe just wiggle around and get some of those wiggles out. Maybe knees moving, maybe back moving, maybe head. Right. So the theme of this class today is about resilience and how we can um, have the inner strength to cope with anything that comes our way, uh, bounce back, from adverse you know, situations, uh, and how do we keep going with all of that? So that comes from our resilience and strength. Some of it's internal, some of it's external support that we receive, receive from outside of ourselves. So we're gonna acknowledge that as we move through our, our uh, poses today. And just checking in with your breath. Your hands can be up, you can bring your palms down, whatever feels better for you. Let's take three rounds of breath. Just a little deeper than normal. And then begin to blink your eyes open if they were closed. And we're gonna find a little bit of movement. So this brings out your inner teacher. I can't see what you're doing, even on the Zoom classes. So this gives you the opportunity to turn into your, tune into your body and notice what's working for you. Um, you become the teacher yourself. So we're gonna take a little bit of movement, taking the fingertips out to the side, relaxing the shoulders away from the ears, then turning the palms up, inhaling to reach the arms up. And then exhale, float the arms back down. Two more times, starting to warm up through the shoulders and feeling that expansiveness of the chest. Good, inhale, bring it up. Bringing the arms up, softening the shoulders away. We'll take the, oh, let's go right hand to the right and then lean to the right side, reaching the left arm across. Good. Take another two breaths here. You can look up, out, or down, depending on how your neck feels. And then inhaling, coming back to center. And then over to the left. So left hand comes down, left elbow bends, right arm reaches over and across. Again, deciding where your neck is most comfortable. And acknowledging that if you have any issues, you can always change the position of your arm. And keep your breath moving. Inhaling, coming back up. And then we'll take a gentle twist. Let's go to the right. I keep getting a little bit confused. So left hand to right thigh, right hand behind you, maybe looking over your right shoulder. Taking two more rounds of breath here. And then bringing the arms up as we come back to center and going to the left. So right hand to left knee, left hand behind us, inhaling to lengthen the spine and then gently twisting to the left. Bringing the arms back up to center. We're gonna keep the shoulders up, belly drawn in, and then begin to hinge forward through the hips, noticing that there are muscles holding you up here, part of our strength here. And then when you've had enough, you just bring the hands down. Finding a gentle forward fold, maybe you walk the hands out further, maybe the belly is over the thighs and letting your head relax. You can even wriggle side to side here. Just doing a nice little warm up before we get started with the stronger poses. And inhaling to roll back up. 
Good. Noticing the cross of your legs, if they are crossed and switching them out. And we'll go through that same sequence. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, float them back down. Inhale, bring them up. Exhale, float them down. Good. Inhale, bring it up. Good. Right hand down. Reaching over to the right side. Keep the left hip down. Take another breath here. Inhale, back up to center. And then over to the left side. Keeping the right hip down. Another breath. Exhale. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, twisting to the right. Taking an extra breath here. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, twist to the left. Extra breath. Inhale, coming back to center. And just keeping those shoulders back, but down and away from the ears, hinging forward. Again, checking in, what do you feel here? Good, and then if you'd like, hands down and slowly rolling it forward to give yourself a little bit of a stretch. Maybe a little rock side to side. And then slowly walking the hands back in, rolling back up through a nice tall spine. Go ahead and shake out the legs, straightening them out, maybe just doing a little shake. And we're gonna move into our um, butterfly pose. So after some time, you might find you don't need the blanket anymore and you can just move it out of the side. So we're gonna bring the feet together, knees out into our cobbler's pose. And then taking your chest forward, I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see what this looks like. Inhale, chest forward. Shoulders back, looking up, a little arch in the back here, and then exhaling, rounding, tucking the chin. Going through that cat and cow movement, arching and rounding the spine a few more times with the breath. Good, exhale. And then coming to a neutral spine position, hinge forward through the hips. Good, and then just kind of noticing, where does it feel right? Can you go um, to the edge and not past it, maybe even back off of the edge a little bit. Once your body is about where it needs to be as, or as far as the lower body, then let the shoulders relax, the head relax. Maybe even turn your palms up and allow yourself to rest here. And turn your palms down, slowly roll back up. Good. From this position, give yourself a little time to Move the head, maybe letting the letter, uh, the nose draw the letter O. And reversing to go the other direction. Good. So if you're comfortable with what we've done so far, you're welcome to stay seated while we move through those cat and cow uh, variations again, the arching the back and the rounding the back. But if you'd like to come to hands and knees and you're okay with the wrists uh, and knees, and you're just going to make your way into your tabletop position with your wrists right beneath your shoulders, spreading your fingers wide and really feeling your weight shifting towards the fingertips and the knuckles, not just into the wrist. Knees are right beneath hips. Feeling the tops of the feet down and the belly drawn in. This is our tabletop position. And then as you move, your chest forward, relax the belly down, tilt the tailbone up, look forward. This becomes our cow position, arching the back, and exhale, pulling the belly up toward the spine, tucking the chin, tucking the tailbone under into the calf. Two more times, inhale, take it forward. Exhale, round. Last one, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, come back to your neutral spine. Take your knees a little wider, toes maybe towards each other, and sink the hips toward the heels, finding your child's pose. If this isn't comfortable for you, you can find any rest pose that feels comfortable. Maybe the elbows are down. Maybe hands are under, underneath forehead. Maybe arms reach out. 
and slowly bringing yourself back to tabletop and lining your knees up underneath your hips again. We're gonna check in with our resilience uh, in the upper body. So um, we'll take the hands a little further forward, maybe about a handprint. Good. We really wanna feel the, the shoulders still engaged down the back, not a rounding, but feeling that um, place between the shoulder blades. And then as you shift forward, making sure those wrists are still underneath your shoulders, lower your hips in line with your body. This becomes our plank with our knees down. If you're feeling fairly strong through the shoulders, you can lift the knees and come into a regular plank. I'm having a few shoulder issues, so I'm gonna keep my knees down. And then bend the elbows back towards your knees and then press back away. Again, bend and press. Good, bend, press back up. Take a little break from that anytime you want, maybe sitting up, maybe sitting back, and maybe circling out through the wrists. As I said, I have a little bit of a shoulder injury today, so I'm not gonna do very much um, that's gonna involve a lot of strength on that side, but feel free to do more if you're used to doing more, or just follow me, or even take a break from all of that. From our tabletop position and hands a little further forward, spread your fingers wide, maybe take your hands a little wider. I like to take mine towards the edges of the mat. And we're gonna tuck the toes under. Drawing that belly up toward the spine, we lift the knees. So here we start to check in with our inner strength as far as our body goes in the core area. We're gonna press the chest back towards the thighs, lowering the head between the arms, and then begin to lift the hips a little higher. Still keeping a deeper bend in the knee, the knees, you can start to alternate one heel down and then the other. They may not ever touch. And then when you're ready, come up onto the balls of the feet and then press the heels down. Downward facing dog. And then just very slowly, begin to walk the feet toward the hands or the hands toward the feet. Take your feet as wide as you feel comfortable with. Bend your knees. Allow yourself to just drape over your thighs. Maybe reaching for your opposite elbow and swaying side to side. Let the head relax. Imagining tension just kind of dripping off your shoulders. Release the arms. Bring your hands to your thighs. Bend your knees a little more deeply. Keeping that long spine here, press into your thighs and slowly come back up. Good. We're going to come into our standing pose. Here's a good time to take a little break, maybe moving things around, grabbing a drink of water. As we begin to find our, our strong poses from mountain pose into other standing poses, I'm going to bring my notes over just so we can see. I like to spend some time just rocking back and forth onto the toes and then back to the heels. Noticing how that feels on the feet. And maybe even shaking out a leg, shaking out the hands. Good. Then begin to establish your mountain pose. You want to feel the feet firmly rooted with your hip bones, knee bones, and ankles lined up. It's always okay to go a little wider if that feels better for, or more stable in your body. Spreading your toes wide and then relaxing them down. Good. We're still going to keep a soft bend in the knees. And then inhaling shoulders up toward the ears, maybe making some light fists with the hands as if you're gathering the tension in your body. And then opening the mouth, big sigh. <sighs> Roll the shoulders down and back. So let's do that two more times. Inhaling. And exhaling. Last one. Exhale. Good. So we start to find this strength, this position of strength that builds from our feet all the way up. Good. Bring your hands together in front of your heart. Maybe just pause here. Close your eyes and check in. How do you feel? Do you feel strong? Do you feel capable? Who is it that's helped you 
through some difficult times and maybe send out some gratitude to that person or persons. Good. Slowly open the eyes, release the arms down. Inhale, let's do a sun circle. Arms come up and then exhale, float the arms back down. Again, inhale, floating those arms up, reaching up and exhale, float it back down. On this next one, we're gonna inhale, bring the arms up, take the feet a little bit wider if that feels good to you, and then turning your palms forward, we're gonna take the right hand behind the left wrist and then slowly draw yourself over to that right side, pressing into both feet and breathing. Good, inhale back up, good, and now Let's see, left hand goes behind right wrist, and then we're stretching over to the left side. We're feeling the right side. And then inhale, coming back up. Begin to bend your elbows, slide the elbows down so they're about even with your shoulders. Take your feet a little wider, toes turned out, and bend your knees, coming into our goddess pose. Good. Again, in your resilience, in this case, what's working is our thighs, our glutes, many other places too. You want to feel the thighs drawing towards each other even without touching. Good. And then bringing the elbows together. Inhale to open and exhale together. Inhale to open. Keep your lower body right where it is and then twist to, let's go to the right, and then back to center and then to the left. Good. Back to center. Releasing the hands. We're going to turn the feet so that the feet are parallel and you can still have the feet wide and then hinging forward, keeping the spine nice and long, meeting out with your chest. You may start stop about halfway down or you might bring your hands to your thighs, your shins, or even the ground. Finding a forward fold, you can again rock back and forth to the toes and then the heels. You can also bend the right knee and then the left knee. Just checking in. What's working well today? What needs more love? Good. Pausing in center, softening the knees, hands to hips, slowly come back up. Beautiful. Heel toe the feet back so that they are more in line with our hips. Beautiful. So we're going to work through a few more of uh, these standing poses to kind of check into that resilience again. So a lot of this comes, we talk about strength coming from our muscles, but a lot of it's our own inner determination. The breath really helps too. So anytime you're in a pose and you're not sure if you want to keep going and it's just uncomfortable but not painful, try to tune into your breath and use your breath, the power of your breath, to keep you there. Just noticing the inhale and the exhale. And they can be through the nose, making even a sound. The Ujjayi breath, okay? All right, so coming through our half sun salutations, we're just gonna inhale to reach the arms up. Exhale, soften the knees, forward fold. Inhale, come up halfway. You're gonna bring your hands either to your thighs or to your shins, whatever allows your, shoulder, your spine to be long and your shoulders down your back. So this is making your back muscles work and your core holds you up. Halfway lift, exhale back down to forward fold. Inhale, either hands to hips and slowly coming up, or if you'd like, turn your palms out, press into your feet and come back up into an upward salute, lifting the heart, maybe looking up. Good, exhale, release. Let's do that again. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Reverse swan dive, coming on up. Lifting the heart. Beautiful. Exhale, hands to heart. Release the hands. Turn your feet a little wider and maybe swing side to side. Taking a moment to maybe let release tension that we are building. So not all tension is bad. Tension is how we build our muscles, how we build our strength. And coming back to center. Um, so two of the poses that I like um, for
for strength and for resilience are warrior one and warrior two. So let's check in. What's the difference between the two? So warrior one, you keep your hips facing the leg that's bent. So for example, if you step back with your right foot, bend the left knee, you're gonna angle that right foot off at an angle that allows your hips to face your left knee. Your hips and your chest face forward, your arms reach up. So this is warrior one. Here's a couple of variations. Good. So for some people, this feels a little too intense in the low back, and if that's the case, you take your stance a little shorter and still keep that left knee over the left ankle. For some people, it feels good to go way deep. Mine is somewhere in between, and you still, again, want to feel everything working through here, reaching the arms up into warrior one. Good. So we're going to do a couple of options. Notice that if you're feeling strong from the waist down, rooted down through the feet, through the thighs, the glutes, everything working, the upper body can do whatever it wants. You can actually float around. It's kind of fun, right? Now we're going to bring the arms up. Good. Bend the elbows, slide them down while the heart lifts, coming into our um, open-hearted warrior. And then lean forward. Good, checking in. What's working here? Good. Maybe arms reach down and back. Maybe arms come forward, palms up. Come a warrior. And then finally, if you're wanting a little bit of a challenge, you can bring your hands to your heart Shift your weight into that left foot and see if you can lift the right one. When you're ready to release, bring it down, reach the arms up. Good. Hands to hips, step forward. Wiggle out the hips. Good. We'll resume with the other side. All right, so we're ready to begin the other side. So stepping back with left foot, right knee bounce. Again, discovering where you'd like that position to be. Where do you feel stable? Where do you feel strong without causing any undue pressure anywhere? So thighs draw together, feel the outer edge of the back foot front knee directly over the ankle. Again, just keeping your chest forward um, and your hips facing forward. We start to establish the warrior one on this side. And then as you're ready, arms come up. But again, you can play with that movement of the upper body. Notice how the bottom part of your body supports that upper body movement. So no matter how windy, no matter how things get, you're still fairly stable from the lower, the waist on down. So we'll come and explore that same movement. Elbows slide down the back, chest lifts into our open-hearted warrior. Maybe adding the elbows together and then inhale to open. Good. And then beginning to hinge forward, feeling the balance shifting. Maybe the arms reach back. Maybe even your hands come forward and palms up into Humble Warrior. If you're going for the challenge on this side, maybe your hands come to heart, maybe your hands come to hips, and then that left heel starts to lift. You can always keep the toes down, or as you're ready, maybe you begin to come into a little bit of a flight. And we're just gonna release it by bending the front knee, coming back to warrior one. Good. Hands to hips, step forward. Good, and just give yourself a little swing. I tend to have a little bit of um, low back issues when I do a lot of warrior one, so that's about it for me. And then in that case, I like to bend the knees and then come into a really soft, dangly forward fold. Maybe even just kind of swaying here. And slowly roll back up. 
Beautiful. So let's contrast warrior one to warrior two. So as you notice, when we were in warrior one, our hips, our chest faced the knee that's bent. In warrior two, we begin to take and turn our torso away from that. So notice how it feels. If you just step, let's go right side, right leg back, just as you did with warrior one. And notice what happens when you try to turn your torso. If you're like me, my body doesn't quite move that way. So for me, it helps to line the heels up a little bit more, maybe even go wider and then turn sideways. So kind of take your time and figure out how does this work? So in this case, uh, let me go right side again. I'm sorry for the confusion. I'm getting um, this camera angle kind of reverses things for me. So right knee bends. Good. And if you look down, your heels might be in line with each other. You might have the front heel in line with your arch, but you kind of just notice what works for you so that the left knee, right knee, sorry, stays over the ankle. You still feel the outer edge of that left foot and notice the work that's happening in the thighs up through the core. Good. Now the arms float out. Good. And instead of this really being a passive movement, we can imagine that we have springs under our hands and we're trying to press down. And as we look to the right, turn that right palm up. This here is another variation of our warrior. Inhale as the right arm reaches up, left hand goes to left thigh. Opening up into our peaceful warrior, feeling that right rib cage open. And then back to warrior two. Bending right elbow, bringing it to the top of the thigh. Left arm may reach overhead. Or if you're having shoulder issues like me, you might keep your hand on your chest. So just check in what's working here. If you want a little challenge left, right arm reaches forward, using more of that core to hold you up and maybe even reaching up. Good. Inhale back to warrior two. Relax the arms, straighten the knees, turn the toes forward. Good, we're back into the side version. So, but if we were gonna go back to warrior one, what we would do is change the left foot so that it's a little further out, and then we can easily turn our hips forward and then come into warrior one. Good. Stepping forward, let's play with that on the other side. Good. So now, right foot steps back. Nope, it's left foot back. Okay, excuse me for that one. So left foot steps back, right knee bends. We're gonna to wanna to turn in this direction. Oh man, I'm getting that one mixed up again. All right, let's try it again. All right, so right foot steps back, left knee bends. And then if we wanted to try and turn this sideways, it would be easier to line up the heels. So in effect, we bring heel in line with heel or heel in line with arch. But you find that out. What works for you, you're your, teach, you're your own teacher. I'm just here to give you some ideas and to make sure you don't hurt yourself by tuning into your breath and to notice what feels painful, then you skip that. Good. Once you get to this position, hips are now facing away from that bent leg. Arms reach out. Relaxing the shoulders, but feeling that tension still through the arms. We'll look over to the left hand and turning that left palm up, reach up. Expanding through the left side of the body, right hand to right thigh. And then back to warrior two. Bending the left elbow, bringing it to the top of the thigh. Right hand might reach up and over. Good. If you want a little more, left arm reaches forward. Or maybe up. Use your breath to tell you when it's enough. Inhale back to warrior two. Good. So now if we were going to turn back to warrior one, turn the hips 
in the direction of the bent leg, you might have to shift your feet to make that happen. And then we come back to warrior one. Bring your hands to your hips, slowly step forward. Whew. Give yourself a little break. Maybe even circle out through the hips. Reverse direction. All right. And just for another balance challenge, even though those poses were really still testing our balance, um, we can do something that's a little more intentional. Um, we can simply come into our warrior pose. Bring your attention into your right foot and begin to really feel the weight shifting to the right foot without sinking into the hip. Left knee bends. Maybe you keep your toe down, maybe the knee comes out, keeping the heel against the ankle, toe down. Or maybe you bring your foot to your calf. Finding a spot to gaze at that doesn't move will help you stay focused and tune into your inner strength, inner resilience, inner resolve to hold this balance pose even if it becomes wobbly and then as you're ready just release the arms bring that left knee forward set the foot down good give yourself some time to unwind from what you just did and also to reset your mind so that you're not automatically thinking about what's next or expecting um, specific results. Just reset. We're back to mountain pose. Good. Then you find your mountain pose. You shift your weight into the left foot. Bend the right knee. Maybe the knee opens up to the side, keeping the toe down, heel against the ankle. As you find your focal point, maybe that right foot comes up to the calf. You may even be able to bring it up higher as long as it's a little higher up the thigh, not on the knee. Give that a try. Hands can be anywhere you want. When you're ready to release, bring the arms down, knee forward, set the foot down. Good. And then just release it all. You may have noticed that one side was much different than the other, and that's pretty common. We tend to dominate on one side. And that's just information, nothing that you have to fix or judge, but try to be a little balanced in what you do, especially on the mat. Probably going to make our way back down. If you want to come through a little um, short vinyasa, you're welcome to follow me. Otherwise, you're just going to have a seat. So we'll start with inhaling, sweeping the arms up. Exhale, soft bend in the knees as we forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Planting the hands either on the sides of the feet or just in front. Step back into your plank pose. Good. Knees down if that feels more uh, doable for you. And then bending the elbows. Maybe you're only coming part way down, and that's pretty much mostly what I'm going to do today. Good. Because, again, shoulder issue. And then we're going to make our way all the way down to the belly. So I'm going to do elbows down. And then bring the hands alongside the chest. Good. Inhaling, shoulders back, chest forward. Finding a little baby cobra here. And if you want, you can actually lift your chest a little more. Exhale, bring it back down. Inhaling, coming back through tabletop. Tucking the toes under, downward facing dog. Finding steadiness of the breath. And when you're ready, release the knees down. You can lower your hips to one side and swing your legs around in front. Oh, just giving yourself a little pause from all the work we've done so far. It's uh, about 90 degrees in South Florida, and I'm definitely, definitely feeling it even with the fan and the air conditioner but I'm still grateful to be able to practice from my home office. This is really um, a little space and there's a desk right behind you guys. And that's really my home office. My husband works from here too, so that's gonna be 
fun when we're sharing the space um, when he's working here. All right, so finally, as you're ready, we're just gonna make our way all the way down to the back. So I'm gonna come a little closer so you can see me. And we're just rolling all the way down, giving ourselves a little rest here. Maybe knees are bent, maybe legs are stretched out, it's up to you. Now we'll bend the knees and bring the feet a little closer to the glutes. Feel yourself activating some muscles right through this core by pressing your low back toward the ground without getting too flat. We still want a little gentle, uh, natural curve in the, in the lower back area. And then pressing into the feet, maybe you begin to lift the hips an inch or two into our bridge pose and then roll it back down. You're gonna add a little bit, bringing the knees into the chest, giving them a nice hug, maybe rocking side to side. And we're gonna take the arms out to the side. You can do palms up or palms down and slowly lowering the knees over to the right side. I'm gonna move my little microphone stand here. If you need to bring your feet to the ground before they go over, you can do that or bring a block under the knees. Maybe look to the left. And bringing the knees back to center. We're gonna set the feet down, find the uh, body centered on the mat again, lifting the hips, rolling up, feeling the knees reaching away from you, feeling the stretch across the flexors, the work through the glutes, just observing whatever sensations you feel here. And then exhale, bring it back down. Bring the knees back into the chest. Again, rocking if that feels good. And then arms out to the sides, palms up, palms down, lowering the knees over to the left side. Take your time. No hurry for twists, especially. If it feels comfortable, you can look to the right. Beginning to soften. Head back to neutral, knees back to center. I'm sending both legs up and both arms up and we can just do this little dead bug dance just for fun. Noticing how that feels. Oh, just getting really silly. Give yourself a moment to move in any way that feels good. So maybe there's one other pose or some movement we did earlier you'd like to repeat, but go ahead and allow yourself to do that. And then once you're ready, just make your way down to your most comfortable position for Shavasana, our final relaxation pose. I like to use my knees bent, feet a little wider and knees propping against each other because it feels good on my low back but you might decide you like the legs stretched out a little wider with maybe the toes flopped out to the side. Arms can be out to the side with the palms up or palms down. You could bring your hands to your belly. Just take, decide what works for you here. Let's take three more rounds of breath, inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. Again, inhaling. Exhaling, imagining you're releasing all of that need to be strong. For now, you can release. Let it all go. Allow yourself to just rest here. Feeling the back of the body completely supported by the earth. Your mat underneath you. Notice if you're gripping anywhere, can you soften that area? And soften your face, lips, cheeks, eyebrows. And just let the breath move on its own. Let the mind stay with the sounds around you, the movement of the breath. Not going into the past or the future, but just enjoying these moments. I'm going to be quiet while you enjoy this.
while I enjoy it. watching this and you want to stay in Shavasana, you can pause the video now and stay as long as you want. If you're ready to begin coming out of this, we'll just gently wiggle the fingers, the toes, feel the breath moving through the body, maybe starting to move the wrists and the ankles, maybe hugging the knees into the chest, maybe taking another big stretch Acknowledging the whole length of your body. Taking a deeper breath, bringing a little more energy into your body. And then as you're ready, just slowly rolling over to one side, you can pause in your fetal pose. And then slowly use your hands to press yourself back up to a seated position. We'll end in our seated pose just as we began. And then, and then taking a moment to bring your hands together in front of your heart, a little bow of your chin to acknowledge yourself, to acknowledge your inner resilience, your inner strength, all the things you've been through and you're here. The mat practice that we did today, what we did was just right. No matter what you were able to do or not do today. It was right for your body today. And at the same time, begin to acknowledge all of those around you in your life who give you same, some of that strength and support whenever you need it. And you give it back to them. Always honoring that ability to storm, weather the storm, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be safe. Namaste. Thank you, everybody.